for this tutorial I asked myself, what does spark joy in me? And this setup certainly does. It is called graph bundling. And it looks a bit similar to a setup we published under the name of connecting the yarns. However, the algorithm with which we do this is totally different, and based on a neat paper called Graph Bundling by Kernel Density Estimation. However, before we talk about the paper it's based on, and some of the neat ideas we stole here or we used here, let's talk about one important concept, and that is the concept of a gradient. To explain, in Houdini just let me drop down a grid, that in there, and let's increase its rows and columns to say 100 by 100, and then append a mountain. Maybe scale this a bit. So we end up with this, this mountainous landscape. Imagine you are hiking through this mountainous landscape and suddenly there is very dense fog all over the place. You cannot see further than say a meter, but you wanna to get to the peak, to the mountain's peak or to the next mountain peak. So what would be your best strategy to go there? Well, just look around you like this one meter radius and pick the direction in which the terrain goes up the steepest. And then you go one meter in this direction and again, look around you, decide in which direction the terrain increases in height the steepest. And again, you go in this direction. This direction of the steepest ascend of the terrain's height value is called the gradient. And Houdini has several methods of calculating a gradient. In this case, let's just use the measure SOP, append that to our mountain. And we want to measure points and we want to measure the gradient of our points position and in this case of the Y component, that's the height. So let's highlight this tool here and we're seeing this bunch of points here. And when we zoom in here and look closely at those arrows, those vectors here, they point into the direction of the steepest ascent. So for example, when we start here, we are getting somewhere around to this peak here. And while this technique, the gradient technique, might not get us to the absolute highest peak, for example, here, it will reliably lead us to a local maximum. That means a local smaller peak. So to rephrase this more generally, the gradient of a function points into the direction of the function's steepest ascent. That means the direction in which the function's values increase the most dramatically. And we're going to use this to bundle a bunch of wires together. So how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna liberally steal some ideas from this neat paper called Graph Bundling by Kernel Density Estimation. I will link it in the description. In this paper, we're gonna find this diagram and that's what we're gonna do. Let me zoom in here a bit. We're gonna take an input graph, basically a bunch of wires. We're gonna do some edge resampling to make sure they have uniformly spaced apart points. Then we will generate a density map. That means a raster that tells me how many points are in which area of the image. In this case, in the paper, they do it through a technique called splatting. Let's not worry about this too much, but somehow we generate a density map from those individual edges. Then we calculate the gradient of this density map, resulting in this gradient map. And then we use this gradient to advect our individual edges here, called edge advection. And finally, we smooth out those edges and then we render those. Let me explain a bit more in detail. So we're starting out with a graph. And a graph consists of individual lines. They might be crossing, they might not be overlapping. And the question is, how can we bundle these together? And in this case, what we're gonna do is we are rasterizing those individual lines, building this density map. And in our case, let's do this line by line, for example. And to every grid cell that is intersected by a given line, we will add some value into this grid cell. So for the first line, our underlying grid might look a bit like this. Let's do the same thing for the second line, that's this one. And we will just add up those values that are caused by this line onto the underlying cells. And we can see already here where the two lines intersect on the underlying grid, we are getting a higher value in our grid cell. Finally, let's do that thing for the third line as well, resulting in this density map on our grid. Now I'm slightly deviating from the paper here. What I'm doing now is we're gonna blur the values on our grid. And this has two effects. On the one hand, it smooths out our values. So it makes advection a bit smoother. Otherwise advection was very jittery in my case, especially when you animate the thing. And also it spreads out values into previously empty cells. And then we're gonna calculate our gradient from those density values resulting in those vectors pointing in the direction of the strongest ascent in our values, which in this case would result in those vectors approximately. And finally, we're gonna use that gradient field so that bunch of vectors to push around those individual points of our lines with the endpoints of our lines remaining fixed, which will give us these slightly crooked lines. So what we'll do in a final step is we'll smooth out those lines so they are not appearing as jaggy. 